And I think that's the line for me is great technology should give you superpowers. It should make you better at what you do. Hello there, and welcome to today's episode, a bonus episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast. If we haven't met before, my name is Monica Burns, and I'm a former New York City public school teacher, been out of the classroom for a few years, leading professional development for teachers, and writing about all things ed tech on my blog, classtechtips.com. I'm recording this for you today from South Carolina, where I'm working with teachers at a conference this week, and so excited for you to hear this conversation. Today, we have a special bonus episode in partnership with Goose Chase. Now, before we jump into today's episode, a quick reminder, you can head to my website, classtechtips.com slash podcast for all of the show notes and resources from today's episode. And if you're listening to this episode on a podcast player like Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or maybe even Google Podcasts, you should see a link in the description somewhere on the app that you can click on as you listen today, and it will take you to all of the resources resources I mentioned. This episode is sponsored by Goose Chase. If you haven't heard of it yet, Goose Chase is a platform designed to help teachers and schools create interactive experiences for students and school communities. You can use Goose Chase to create active and exciting lesson plans, add more fun to field trips, launch epic class challenges, and do things a little differently. Students earn points and have a good time just for showing what they know. Goose Chase experiences are fun to create and easy to reuse and share with fellow teachers teachers. It's free to sign up and start building your first experience. Visit goosechase.com to learn more. Today's episode is titled Beyond the Textbook, a dive into experiential learning. Bonus episode with Goose Chase. And I chat with Andrew Cross, the founder and CEO of Goose Chase. We talk all about experiential learning, what it is, what it looks like in classrooms, and how you can use technology tools to organize experiences and connect with other educators who are passionate about creating hands-on learning experiences for students. Let's dive into the conversation. Welcome to the podcast. I am so excited to chat today about this idea of experiential learning, really moving beyond the textbook or traditional learning experiences. But before we dive in, can you share a little bit with listeners, what is your role in education? What does your day-to-day look like? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Andrew Cross. I'm the founder and CEO of Goose Chase. In terms of my role in education, very fortunate to have you know a lot of educators as a huge part of our business. We always like to joke internally that we have a whole bunch of different customers, but educators are clearly the most passionate members of the Goose Chase flock. I mean that in the best way possible. And as a result, it's really rewarding for us to be able to help them create better learning experiences. And in terms of my day-to-day I don't really know where to start. My role changes all the time based on what's needed at different times in the company. I've been the lead engineer, design, customer success, operations, different roles I did better in than others. But today, I'm mostly focused on setting and communicating the company vision, leading the team, and helping our customers be as successful as they possibly can be. Well, I am just excited to pull from your experience, your conversation with educators for our conversation today. And we're talking about this concept of experiential learning, which I'm sure listeners have have seen or participated in or as part of their classroom experience and the work that they do in, in schools and districts. But to set the stage for us today to make sure we're all on the same page, can you explain what experiential learning is for those who might not be familiar? familiar with the concept. Absolutely. And just to get it off the top, I love this topic. I think it's fantastic. I'm I'm definitely a little bit biased when it comes to that, but growing up, all of my best learning memories were all experiential. So this is a, a topic that's close to home for me in the best way possible. And I think when you really get into it, there's a whole bunch of research on it. Going way back to the 80s, David Kolb was this educational theorist that kind of made this term a thing in very deep you know, research going into it, but without going completely down that rabbit hole, I think it really comes down to students, to students learning by doing and then reflecting on the experience afterwards, or even simply you know, doing, reflecting, thinking, and then applying. 
you do that loop a whole bunch of times, you're going to get pretty good results. And I think for me, a lot of the benefits come down to just a better understanding and retention of the material. When you're interacting with it, your attitude toward learning improves. It's more fun. You're better prepared for future experiences in life because the way that we work when we get out kind of into the real world is by learning through doing and then assessing what we've done in the moment and saying, okay, I think I can improve upon that. Okay, that that's maybe something I can change later on. So it actually aligns extremely well with both the future that we need, but also better learning outcomes in the moment as well, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. It's this double whammy of both current benefits and future preparation for what we're going to do in the long run. You know, as you were you're talking there about the learning by doing piece, right? Reflecting and really having those deep experiences. I I speak in, in different parts of, of the country very often. And I'll sometimes tell stories of composting in my classroom, right? Where the kids were bringing things up from the lunchroom, putting in the banana peels and apples. And I'll never forget, we went to a field trip at the Central Park Zoo. And we walked into one of the you know rooms or spaces. I think it was the rainforest one. And one of the girls, one of my girls, said to me, "You know, Miss Burns, this smells just like our compost bin, right?" And if we hadn't had that experience, if you know she hadn't had that opportunity to really apply her learning, right, it would have just been an article that she read or a page in a textbook. And you know, I'm curious if there was a moment like that for you, or things that you've kind of seen almost like a before and after, if you will, of of what made you realize it was important to shift from traditional teaching methods to more active experiential learning approaches? So obviously having a bunch of experiential learning moments myself, that's a big part of it. But looking at it through our experience with Goose Chase, we've got a bit of a unique story in that so many startups, they're launched and they have this really defined, here's the problem we're going to solve for these people. And that just wasn't us. We basically came at it from a place that said, hey, we love having great interactive experiences ourselves. We should make this easier for other people, which, you know, in some ways, looking back a little bit naive, but I think it set us on a good course and that we were pursuing this goal that was really passionate for ourselves. And it did take us a few years to really figure out how impactful goose chase and experiential learning in general could be. And a lot of that came from customers surprising us saying, hey, you know, I love to use this platform for this you know, can we? And we pretty much always say, yeah, please, but let us know how it works. We never thought of that before. And I have to give credit to some of the teachers that came to us. And for us, they were visionaries. They connected the dots between, you know, hey, scavenger hunts, which is what we were focused on at the time. That would be great for creating these experiential learning moments. And we actually had one specific teacher I'll never forget who shared with us afterwards that she was teaching governance. So, you know, democracy versus dictatorships, monarchy, kind of a, a dull topic when you're a kid in some ways, right? Like you don't really care that much about those different things. But what she did is she gave them all gummy bears and created an experience through our platform that said, use these gummy bears and figure out how to document the differences between the different types of governance. And it was brilliant because you saw these photos come in with democracy where the gummy bears are in their little circle together. And then you got your dictatorship where there's one gummy bear up on this platform. And it forced the students to really think about the difference. How do we represent the differences in the models? So it had that depth of learning. It had that you know, real deep understanding of the topic. I guarantee you when these students, you know, 30 years from now, mm-hmm. they're going to see you know, democracy and monarchy and all those things in the news. And they're going to remember putting the gummy bear up on the platform. And seeing that for me, I kind of went, oh, we've been doing education all wrong in a lot of ways in just not having these types of experiences available to learn. And that's where I really knew we were onto something, but also that experiential learning just has this extra level that you can get to when it comes to really being impactful. And we've seen a lot of scientific data back this up. There was a a study that we saw that had 81% of students saying they wanted more opportunities for hands-on learning in the class. And even educators were saying 75% of them, we need to get these real world skills, these interactive components to be able to drive better outcomes and set them up for real world success. So all of these things kind of came together for us in our history at once with this one teacher who was like, gummy bears, governance, that's, that's the way forward, which is, it's kind of crazy that that's this massively impactful experience for me and the company as well. But I think it, it demonstrates the power of you know, experiential learning so massively in such a clear way as well. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. As you're talking there, I can just visualize, right? Like the movement of them, kids maybe snapping pictures or even doing like a stop motion animation, right? Just like all of the possibilities there when you're layering on something that might complement, right? A reading resource or a video that we're watching, right? But just taking that truly to the next level. So I love that example that you shared of a successful experiential learning activity. And I'm curious, you know, whether it's from your conversations with partner schools or districts or educators that reach out to you, you know, how does student engagement change when kids are involved in these types of learning experiences compared to more traditional teaching methods? So I think we can all agree, you know, some of the examples that I've shared engagements, the, maybe the easiest thing to identify, you, you create something experiential and people just lock in right away. But two of the other things I, I kind of mentioned earlier on, you definitely see an increase in understanding of the course material. When we were looking into this, we saw there's actually a university in Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. that did a study and they found basically double a gain in knowledge as a result of experiential learning versus traditional. And then kind of the thing that goes with it is the retention. And we actually saw in another study, this was actually in a workplace, but, and I, I'll admit the number, the numbers seem to be pushing it a little bit here, but the traditional learning retention rate was like 5%, something crazy low. And then experiential learning got as high as 90%. Now, I don't know if that's the full spread that you know, you can you can expect in in a more educational uh, traditional educational setting, but those are the types of things where you're going, oh wow, this is not just trivial amounts of fun engagement. This is intentional, purposeful engagement. And we actually saw with one of our customers who was an associate professor at a state university, and they were part of the recreation, parks, and leisure department. And they ran a semester long experience where they visit local parks to explore fauna, kind of similar to the, you know, the compost experience mm-hmm. you were talking about before. And what they did is they found from the gamification elephants, uh, gamification elements, elephants would be cool, but yeah. that uh, significantly increased the engagement to the point where they got the highest exam scores they've ever gotten in that course as a result of that, where that was kind of the only thing they changed between classes. So it's not just the engagement that's the great part. It's actually the beneficial results that come out the other side as well. And the intention, like you mentioned, right, I think is an important component here, right? These are intentional experiences. We all have those like, we giggle moments that we remember, right? Or something funny happens, it's unexpected. And those are fantastic. But here's that intention piece. There's a plan. This is strategic, right? As a way to reach those goals, whether it's student engagement, whether it's retention of information. And, you know, as you were sharing that data, I was thinking back to like the the lecture data we sometimes see, right? When a new study comes out, like how much you retain versus a lecture versus hearing a story, right? For all these pieces. And when you do have that hands-on experience, it's so much more, more meaningful. And so, for listeners of the podcast, a lot of them, you know, come in maybe in a techie role, right? A digital integration specialist, a classroom teacher who's integrating a lot of technology into their classroom, a school leader who's really passionate about making sure students have rich experiences with technology. So, you know, as we're talking today about experiential learning, there's the gummy bears, maybe there's the compost, right? But how does technology play a role in facilitating active experiential learning? Can you give some mm-hmm. examples? And, and maybe this is where Goose Chase comes in a bit for us to learn a little bit more about it. Yeah, absolutely. So first things first, I know this is a podcast, but I grew up in the 90s and Technology for me is like those power-ups you would get in video games Mm -hmm. in the sense that it's not going to do everything for you. You're not going to instantly win the game all in one go. But what it does is it allows you to do things that maybe weren't possible. Otherwise, it allows you to do more with less. And I think that's a really good analogy for what technology can be in experiential learning, but also just in general in the educational space, because it's not something that will solve everything in one go. It won't can completely change all of the things at once, but it can make you better at your job in a really noticeable way. We had an example, you know, obviously COVID is something that thankfully we're mostly past in a lot of ways, but we can all remember at the beginning, technology really showed how powerful it can be. We had a STEAM lab teacher who all of a sudden found all of their students at home and didn't really know how to engage them and keep them interested. And so what they did is they created a really simple experience 
find things around the house that begin with each letter of the alphabet. And then to add a little bit of extra spice to it, throw in some digraphs or two letters that combine to make one sound, your CH, your NGs, that kind of thing. Super, super simple, but really effective and fun. And that's a perfect example of using technology to make you better at your job as a power up. You know, you could do those things maybe really manually otherwise, or some way of, you know, trying to get the essence there, but it would be very time consuming. It might be tough to convey, but technology allows that person to then do the things they want to do in an easier way, in a better way. And I think that's the line for me is great technology should give you superpowers. It should make you better at what you do. And that's what we strive for at Goose Chase. We're really set on if someone gets frustrated using the platform, if someone feels like the platform is getting in the way, sure, it's technology, but it's not good technology. We want you to walk away feeling like, wow, that was awesome. That was a delightful experience. We use delightful way too much internally. Like that's that's a word that comes up so much. The core value, right? <laughs> exactly. I think that's really the line though, is you need to almost be in an awe when technology gets it right to be like, wow, this is what I want to do, but better. And it's making me look amazing. It's making me feel amazing, making me feel like the impact I'm having is way better than I could ever do on my own. Yeah. And just, I'm sure that, you know, that emphasis on a strong user interface, making sure it's a, a delightful, joyful experience for, for educators who are, are interacting in the platform is, is so important for, for everyone, right? Both behind the scenes and those who are clicking the buttons or exploring a space for the first time. So can you tell us more about Goose Chase, how it connects to this concept of experiential learning and maybe a, another success story or two that can help people understand just what it can accomplish? Accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. So first, I'll just say our goal in life is to make the world more fun, playful and human. And I think that really captures a lot of you know what we've built and what we're trying to do and also what experiential learning is all about. Experiential learning is all about you know, making the education space more fun, playful and human. It actually enables more types of students to engage with the content. So I think our vision aligns really well with the purpose of experiential learning as a whole. And I alluded to it a little bit before, but our origins are unique. You know, we started at the hackathon at a university. We focused on scavenger hunts. We focused on a lot of different flexible ways to use the platform. And it was our customers that actually came to us and pushed all the boundaries. We'd like to, you know, say that we're customer led and we really are because we let our customers guide the way for us. Obviously, we've got ideas too, but you know, we let the customers shape what the platform is and, and they really push us forward. And I think it aligns really well with just this shift we've seen in the last five, 10 years where experiences as a whole are becoming more important in the world for everyone. You know, we're not as you know, interested in things as what we might used to be. People want experiences, whether it's travel experiences. So there's this bit of a cultural shift that's happening that's making experiences as an idea, as a concept more desirable for everyone. And that includes students as well. And a huge part of what we're building with Goose Chase is a platform to power those types of interactive experiences where you can use those experiences for types of learning. Um, obviously, a lot of other things as well. But ultimately, we want to have a platform where anyone can use it to connect, inspire and educate people. And obviously had a couple examples before, but we're used for more than just in-class learning. We are used for field trips, PTA events, teacher retreats and conferences, fundraisers. I don't know how, but somehow during COVID, we were used to create the yearbook. So people will create an experience to collect all the photos and, and use that to build the yearbook. We've had teachers who were teaching foreign languages have their students go around the school and get other teachers to say the phrases they were learning and record them. Obviously a fun dynamic to you know, have the students teaching the teachers. And then maybe it's fun when the pronunciation is not you know quite on the point. It's that type of thing to make it more engaging. We've actually seen some teachers who flipped the script and had the students basically demonstrate their mastery in certain modules by creating the goose chases for their fellow students. And the level of excitement in a class just goes up when not only are you having fun, but you're participating in this experience that a student has made. So it's kind of a double win where you have you know absolute mastery from one student, and then you're also able to see how other students are participating and completing the experience and demonstrating their knowledge as well. So there's 
an incredible amount of different ways that the platform can be used. And it really comes back to our idea that we're trying to build something brand new. It's kind of crazy when you think that there's no platform that has really ever existed to make it easy to create interactive experiences for other people. Like scavenger hunts have been around forever. Yeah. People are constantly trying to create interactive experiences for other people. Why has nothing like this existed before? And we're really excited by that idea, building this unbelievable, flexible platform. You can mix and match things. You can combine them. You complete this thing and that unlocks this thing. And that's really this new thing that we're building. But we're also building templates to make it easy. You don't want to give people all the tools and kind of wipe your hands and say, good luck. That's not the most delightful experience. So we're giving templates to show people how they can create their experiences that would work in their classrooms or in other situations. And then we're also building a community, which I think is one of the coolest parts. So we have a community that we're building called The Nest, which is where all sorts of creators can get together, learn from each other, share ideas, learn how they can create better experiences in their own world. And it all comes down to this idea that we're trying to do a lot, but it all wraps into this idea, kind of like we said, our original vision, making the world more fun, playful, and human. And this is just our way of, of doing that. So you kind of put it all together and we built this platform that helps educators improve engagement and learning outcomes through these interactive experiences. And it does it by getting students up and out of their seats, engaging with the material in just this really fun and contagious way, which is pretty cool. Like it's a lot of fun building what we build and it's even more fun seeing how people use it. And I think that's maybe the best part is everyone's just having fun and enjoying it, but there's also positive outcomes that come at the end of it as well. And I'm sure listeners' wheels are spinning on, oh, this would be a great time to do this, or we have this coming up, right? But at the same time, I'm so glad that you mentioned the community, right, for gathering ideas for someone who might listen and say, you know, I am excited about this concept of experiential learning, but need a little bit more, or the templates, like you mentioned. I'm excited about this, but I want to make sure, you know, I have enough time to do all the things, right, throughout the school day. So I appreciate you sharing those additional components for someone who, is listening today, excited about this idea. And even that connection, I know I can resonate so much with, right? Like we're out now, we want to do more things, right? We want to go on all those field trips, right? That we didn't get a chance to do the past few years. And it's just a really exciting time, I think, for someone to step back and say, how can we take things in a new direction, right? For the upcoming school year. So I am going to link out so listeners can find all the things, right? And connect with you all. But for someone who's maybe, you know, on the go, what's just a quick reminder for them of where listeners can go to learn more and get started with Goose Chase? Yeah, absolutely. So probably the best place to start is just our website, goosechase.com. That'll route you out to all the different areas. But if you want to go directly to the community, the nest, we like our goose puns here. That's yeah. community.goosechase.com. So a couple different places that you can go check out. Awesome. Well, Andrew, thank you so much for your time today, for diving into this important topic and, and sharing these great resources with listeners. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed that. It was so much fun and super informative talking to Andrew from Goose Chase today. Let's finish up this episode like we always do with a few key points to make EdTech easy. Understand your intention with experiential learning. Identify goals like promoting retention and develop an experiential learning experience related to your content goals. Remember, you can find the show notes and full list of resources from this episode at classtechtips.com slash podcast, including all of the ways to connect with the team at Goose Chase. Thank you so much again to Goose Chase for sponsoring this episode. It's always free to sign up and start building your first experience. Get creative, boost collaboration, and bring learning to life as your students earn points and have fun just for showing what they know. Visit GooseChase.com to learn how schools across the globe are using Goose Chase. If you're listening to this podcast episode on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or maybe another favorite app, don't forget to hit the follow button. When you follow along with the podcast, each new episode will download for you automatically so you don't miss a thing. And if you have a moment and are feeling extra helpful today, please leave a rating or review for the podcast. It helps other educators find this podcast when they're searching for topics like ed tech or experiential learning in their podcast app. 
Have a great week and check back on Tuesday for another new episode of the Easy EdTech Podcast.